Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my PHP, or Web Programming Security, tutorial. This is a continuation of the previous Web Design and Programming tutorial. Throughout this, we are going to explore many different ways that people hack your website, including session hijacking, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and coding tricks, and a whole bunch of other things. And mainly what you want to do, the most important thing, whenever you're defining that you want to access your database, is that you want to access the database only using using protected files, preferably that are outside of your web directory. If you do that, that makes it almost impossible for people or hackers to gain access to your secure information, as long as you use regular expressions well, and we're going to go through a whole bunch of this stuff. So, and how you want to access that file would be, let's say you have an include folder that is right outside of the web directory, and in that file, you have all of the code that allows you to access the database. And it pulls all that in here and dumps it in here just as if you typed it in yourself. Now, I'm going to skip over that for a minute and go into exactly what's in this config file. This is what that config file is going to look like, PHP. And then what you want to do is you want to define all of the variables that you need to access your database, meaning usernames, passwords, host location, and database name as constants. And this is how you define constants. Again, if you didn't watch the other tutorials, you should watch them. Otherwise, this is probably confusing you. And by changing these or assigning these as constants, that will keep hackers from being able to go in and change these values. You just want to be as paranoid as humanly possible, really, because most websites out there are hackable. A lot of people don't realize it. And one of the major reasons is so many people don't understand regular expressions, which is probably your main defense against computer hackers. And then here, we're just going to connect to the database. And then we're going to check here if we're able to access the database itself. And you also want to suppress errors so that it is hard to figure out as much about your configuration as humanly possible. And security is a major subject, so I'm going to have to break this up into a bunch of different tutorials. And if you're unable to access that database, we're going to trigger an error, but we're going to suppress everything. So we're just going to say couldn't, and then we're going to kill the script altogether with the exit command. And if you were unable to connect to the database server, we're going to trigger another error. And you could actually not tell them you're using SQL, and that would also probably be a little bit more secure. But I'm just going to leave that in there for now. And there is everything you need to be able to access the database. Now what we're going to do is we're also going to define a function that's going to scrape out any potential harmful information. And this function for me changes constantly each time I learn of some new security flaw in PHP. And this is in here more for you than it is for me. I'm checking to see if this function exists being the MySQL real escape string. And basically what this does is it escapes characters that could be used for SQL injection, meaning people that are trying to run SQL scripts on your database. And this is just the database itself. And here, I'm going to run this function since I wouldn't get here unless it existed. I'm going to trim all the white space off of it, right like that. And then I'm also going to run another function on this called strip tags. What this is going to do is it's going to strip out any HTML tags that somebody tried to put into your input strings. And if that function doesn't work, I'm going to use the second best function for escaping these strings, which is my SQL escape string function. And again, trim off any excess white space and close that off. And then I'm just going to copy this guy right here and paste that in and put some more space here so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to close that function off and return data. This function is going to pretty effectively escape out any dangerous information in regards to tags and so forth and so on. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways to get around some of this. This is just the secondary defense, and now I'm going to show you the front line defense in keeping this code out of here, and that is going to be regular expressions. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete all this out. Hopefully you got all that. And this is how you could use regular expressions to make sure that nobody is trying to enter bad information or trying to implement either cross-site scripting or SQL injection through an input box that is looking for a first name to be submitted. Well, this is actually unsafe, but for now, there's only so many things I can handle in one tutorial without having it be an hour long. This is actually going to be a hidden field that will be triggered if somebody clicks on the submit button. And if they do, we're going to run all this code. But first, what I'm going to do here is perform a regular expression check. And I'm going to specifically, and I did a whole entire tutorial on regular expressions. I've done a bunch of them, actually. So just like anything else, you know what you can expect 
if somebody's entering a first name, and that's going to be that there's going to be a capital letter between A to Z and lowercase letters between A to Z, then potentially a period and potentially a quote, and also there could be a dash. I'm going to just put that in there, and then we're going to define that this is going to be somewhere between 2 to 15 characters in length, more than likely. And I'm using percentage signs here as my delimiters, if you're wondering what that is. And what strip slash does is it unquotes quoted strings, which is another security concern. And it's also a good idea to pass everything for security reasons through post, and then this is how you access that information that will be stored in that array. So you can see right there with this regular expression, it's going to be almost impossible, it will be pretty much impossible for them to put any type of dangerous information because pretty much all you're allowing them to enter are letters, periods, and quotes and dashes. And here I'm calling the escape data function that I created earlier in this tutorial. However, if they did not pass this regular expression test, I'm going to set the value to false. And then I could do something like echo to screen and do this in red, enter a valid first name, whatever you want to do there, right like that. And this is going to protect your first names and make sure they're all valid. And I'm going to show you how to do a regular expression check on an email, again using the percentage sign as my delimiter. And we're going to put this caret in here to define this as the beginning of the string. We're going to accept capital letters A through Z, lowercase letters A through Z. You could look at this as a return to double check that you remember how to use regular expression. We're also going to accept periods and dashes. And I know that it is common to also put percentage signs in here as something you want to accept, but I'm going to block that because it potentially could cause a lot of harm. Then we're going to say we'll accept the at sign, followed by uppercase letters, lowercase letters, 0 through 9, period, dash, plus, and we have to escape out the period that's going to come before more than likely .com or .net. And we're going to say we expect them to give us between two to four characters here. And then that's going to end, right like that. So this is a valid regular expression you could use to test that they gave you a valid email address. And for street, this is one of the number one fields that hackers look for to attack. We're going to allow periods, we're going to allow a quote, and we're going to allow a dash. And that's it. And we're going to say that this is going to be between 5 to 30 characters in length. And then we're going to close that off as well. City is going to be very similar to this guy right here, except it's going to be between 2 to 25 characters in length. State, I actually did this previously in another tutorial. This would be a shortcut for looking up states. Again, carrot symbol. And then what you would do is put the letter A, capital. And then this is going to match for AK, AL, AR, and AZ, which are all valid state names or abbreviations. And then what you would do is you would continue doing this for every other potential state abbreviation. CA, CO, CT. And then put another OR sign in there. And I have a link to all this code in the underbar. If you want to just copy it from there. Then zip code, of course, would also be delimiter, caret symbol, number 0 through 9, 5 digits in length, dollar sign, and another delimiter. And telephone number, there's the delimiter. And then you're going to say, okay, well, they might put a bracket in there, but they might not. You remember from previous that means you put a question mark in there because you don't know it's going to be there or not and then you expect three digits to be entered you want to be as specific as humanly possible with this that's the only way you're going to be able to protect yourself because sure enough the one thing that you do not protect i guarantee you will eventually get hacked and then four digits right like that and close the delimiter and that's a regular expression check for telephone number and the last thing i'm going to do is show you how to guarantee that a password entered has at least one capital letter one lowercase letter and one number and is at the very minimum six characters in length and that would be backslash a is another way to define the beginning of a regular expression a through z a through z zero through nine close that off and here we're basically saying that this string of characters, which would represent the password, must have, it can have any of these different digits inside of it or characters, what have you, but one of them must be a capital letter that is between A to Z. And I went over this previously in another tutorial, exactly how it works. And then you would continue doing that onwards. I can actually copy this guy right here. By the way, this is the same as that. And then all I need to do is come in here and change this to A-C. And this is saying that we want at least one of the characters they enter to be a lowercase letter. 
And then here we're saying that we want one of them to be a number. And this way you know that you're going to get yourself a valid password entered and no spaces. And that we want this to be at least six in length. Close that off, dollar sign. So right there in this tutorial, I taught you pretty much some of the most valuable information in regards to protecting your information. Again, in upcoming tutorials, I'm going to go into a lot of the other different things. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.